might be wondering why I've got a uh, Christmas coffee cup here. Eh, it's not like I'm one of those people that want Christmas to start early. I don't care. I just needed a coffee cup so I could wake up. But I am one of those pumpkin spice people. So what's up, everybody? Welcome. I am Jam, the Indie Hunter, or Jam Hunter, or just Hunter, whatever you can remember, or that one guy with the weird facial hair. That'll work, too. And welcome to a long overdue update of 100 Days of Making Comics Challenge. So it's been a few days since I've updated you, so I'd like to get you caught up to speed. This week starts the Road to SoulCon and CXC. So here in Columbus area, we've got two part shows that are partnering up that specialize in comics, zines, and cartoonists. So one is over at OSU, that's the SoulCon portion that takes place on Friday. And then Saturday, Sunday is the CXC Cartoon Crossroads of Columbus. That happens over at the Metropolitan Library in Columbus on Saturday and Sunday. I think I said that twice. Okay, at any rate, but this whole week is full of panels, lectures, programming, movies, guest speakers. Um, this week is just going to be popping when it comes to Columbus. Um, a lot of that is courtesy of programming from via OSU, Ohio State University, and the laser department, as well, and especially Billy Ireland Cartoon Museum, um, Caitlin McGurk and Jen Robb and all of them um, that help put on all this programming. Uh, lots of cool people are coming into town. Bendis, Fraction, I think Kelly Sue's coming. Um, we've got cartoonists from all over the place, local, coming from all over the area. Um, it's going to be a nice show. And then SoCon, which is a show that I'm personally a part of, I'll be exhibiting as well as doing a workshop with um, Yuko Smith. Uh, Yuko Smith is a fabulous artist. I don't know why I use the word fabulous. I don't use fabulous. It sounds weird coming out of my mouth. So he's an awesome artist. And he will be there slinging some ink. With um, We'll be talking about character design. Okay, so we've got SoulCon happening Friday at the laser um i think hale hall i believe is the area that we're having it take place at you need to come out multicultural um celebrating multicultural creators we bring in high school kids and everyone else comes over there and sees what we're about we talk to them engage with them and basically try to um give them a few workshops and try to inspire them and let them know that that this medium is there for them as well um you know the medium of comics is a great outlet especially if you um, feel like you don't have a voice or you're one of those people from a marginalized group that um, just struggles to express themselves or feels like, you know, they don't hear you. Um, so um, I can't stress comics and cartooning enough as an outlet and as a way to, to get your voice out there. So um, moving on with the challenge, I might talk about soul con in depth um, here coming up, but when I bring in my other crew, I've got my fellow Angry Artist Studio um, mate, Guy Copes from PunchUgly.com, coming into town tomorrow morning. So I haven't been getting much sleep. It doesn't look like I'm going to get much more sleep. So I'll be picking him up from the airport. And then we got Albert Morales of Super Impacto also coming in Wednesday, midnight of Wednesday. So it's like a whole shift. And um, we'll have some interviews going on with those guys. So again, this is a road to SoulCon and CXC. It happens now. Speaking of the 100-day challenge of making comics here's where i'm at I'm, I'm i'm somewhere i'm making comics i'm writing scripts i'm drawing pages and i'm doing a lot of research when it comes to certain subjects of what i want to um to talk about as well as certain applications that i want to learn so that way i could take my art in another direction so let's talk about some of the tools that I'm using, and then I'll show you some of the pages I've actually been working on. In regards to the tools that, I've, that I'm using currently, I have my, for my Autobio Diary comic, good old tone sketch pad, it's heavier stock paper. It is um, 80 pound, it's 80 pound weight, which is good. I like heavy weight, nine by 12. And I just wanted to experiment with tone paper um, I've gotten, I've done a few drawings and artwork on it just to mess with it. This is the first one I did on the tone paper. But eventually, as you've seen in other updates, I, I went into doing comics on it. And um, I just kind of like the way it looks. Having the medium tone already filled in um, mentally allows me to not worry so much about all this blank space of filling up and, you know, the white space. And when I do add whites and highlights to it, they kind of pop out um, that you'll be able to see in person and hopefully when it comes to print. 
Okay, so I'll show you more pages here in a minute. This is just one of the tools that I'm using to draw my comics. Speaking of my diary comic, my semi autobio comic that has a lot of embellishments, I took a poll in my social media about the title of my comic. I've been going with domestically challenged, but that keeps getting more awkward to try and write and draw and say. And so I just said, okay, you know what? What is this comic really about? It's pretty much about the dad bod diaries, you know, me being the guy with the dad bod, and then kind of like just chronicling some of my experiences with my family and just a um, world point of view in a more of a silly, you know, um, Tom Thorey um, vein. So I took a poll and I asked him, okay, so what, what, do, what do the people think? Domestically challenged, keep with that, or the dad bod chronicles? The dad bod chronicles won by a landslide. So um, people seem to like that. I kind of like it too. Um, so I think I'm going to go ahead and um, we're going to change the name of the comic to the dad bod chronicles. So thank you, Facebook, for helping me with that. And um, you'll see that change in the title in a couple of coming strips. And let's see, let's get on to more tools. So I mentioned digitally. I am using the Apple Pencil as well as the iPad Pro to get acquainted with digital working hybrid. Being able to work from the couch, mobile, anywhere um, has just been really awesome, really um, helpful. So the apps I'm messing with currently are Procreate as well as... Um, as well as uh, recently, Comic Draw a little bit. If you want to know more about Comic Draw, um, there's plenty of tutorials and stuff like that. But one of my fellow creators is Loso Perez, who has been doing little tips and tricks and showing his process with Comic Draw. I'll make sure to link him. Loso is on the Prime Vice Studios, I believe. So, I'll, so Loso, I hope I see you this year at SoulCon. Um, if not, um, you know we miss you, buddy. Okay, so yes, Loso and, and, and the Misses are very creative people. They're based out of Atlanta, I believe. And I so part of this iPad is learning how to open it because I seem to struggle with it. There we go. All right. Let's go to Procreate, and I'll show you some of the work I've done. I've done some freelance work here, designs like wedding invitations and all that, and I've done some messing around. So this is Procreate, and this is... A lot of glare on there, but this is the latest I've done. This was a wedding invitation. What I'll do is link to, um, I'll link to the actual image in, in the tags below so you can actually see the image. But um, it's a beautiful program. It's a pain drawing program. It's very intuitive. I, I know just enough to get myself in trouble, so that's, that's cool. And then Comic Draw is the other app. This was a working title. Says I used to have abs. I don't know if that'll remain a cover. It was just me messing around in it. Okay, and we got Sketchbook Pro on here. I recently just got um, Affinity Designer, which is a vector app, and I'll talk more about Affinity Designer and vectors here shortly because there's plans that I have with it. In fact, contributing to the lack of updates and taking some time is, is me about to launch uh, my own T-shirt business. So. Other tools. I have gone back to using mechanical pencils. I just like being able to keep going and sketch real quick, you know, and click and keep sketching and then keep, you know, not having to stop and sharpen. And um, because of the, the, the weight of the pencil, or at least the way I use it, it gives me a nice little wireframe when I'm sketching. So that way, when I do go back in with ink or thicker lines, um, I don't have the heaviness of, of using my regular HP pencils or even the blue line pencils, which the blue line pencils, which I normally use, is, I usually normally use color, blue color pencils, but um, or the, the Prismacolor ones, but because it's the toned paper, I didn't want to deal with struggling to look at blue on top of the thing. And I thought it might just texture wise um, mess with the ink. Okay, so I don't have, I have a few mechanical pencils I like, but I am very hard on these. They break. So this is a skill craft. I ran out of lead. These ones are the cheap ones that you can get. Um, these paper mates that you can get at the store, Walmart, or any other grocery store. Uh, but um, they're a little bit skinnier. The eraser tends to, I tend to, as you can see, I wear that sucker down pretty quick. So this one, these ones I actually like. Um, 
I'm still searching for like a go-to mechanical pencil that can stand my grip and the weight of, um, of how I use them because I'm very heavy-handed. And, and when I draw, if you look how I hold the pencil, I've been holding the pencil like this since second grade, and it's more like, it's almost like a kid with a crayon, you know, so it's like, so that's that's pretty much why I need tools that can, that can handle, you know, um, the abuse that I give to them. Other tools that I'm using, let's see, okay, coffee. I'm averaging about five hours of sleep if I'm lucky. Um, it's, and it's still interrupted sleep, you know, dealing with sleep apnea. And so this is what's keeping me, you know, somewhat, you know, awake and going throughout the day and night. Um, oh, other tool, wallet, an empty wallet. So this empty wallet right here gives me like lots of motivation to keep producing artwork, comics, and to, you know, launch what I hope is a um, successful t-shirt design um, effort. So I've been designing t-shirts and, and different types of apparel, utilizing my own artwork. So if you, I'll put a link to that in there. There's a few um, parody ones on their satire. And then some of my fine art as well as some of the, the digital art I've done. And um, I'm going to continue to, to work on that. And having that affinity designer application is something that I hope being able to work with vectors, having the scalability as well as the background already knocked out will allow me to produce even more designs and start getting some text-based designs. So I'm looking forward to doing that as far as um, freelancing goes, as well as still making comics. Making comics is still my passion. It's still what I want to do primarily. But I also am at the point now where I do need to find other streams of revenue coming in just to just to buy supplies at least you know bare minimum um or just you know buy more coffee or, or buy ramen so okay yeah regarding the wallet this tool this tool is very important you know so being an empty wallet is is the proper motivation you know but it's only so much motivation you know what motivate me even more is that this wallet was filled up this wallet is filled up i have peace of mind and i'm ready to go and work all in on comics and, and artwork that you may want to see. And I don't have to worry about taking other freelance jobs that might not pay as much or having to um, discount the price and focus more on that instead of the comics. So you see how it's all related. So if you'd like to motivate me more, check out some of my t-shirt designs, check out some of the artwork I've got for sale. I have several commission drives happening right now. I've got a sketch card promo commission, original sketch card artwork created, tailored to your character that you would like. And those are going for 15 a pop. So $15 gets you an original piece of artwork, sketch card, fully colored, fully inked, any character you want, even if it's one of your own characters. If you're the type that likes to see your personal character that you created done in various different art styles, hit me up. I'm okay with drawing people's own original characters. In fact, I think it's fun to do. I love helping somebody else actualize their character. So this is not a character design promo. You already have to have the design, you know, displayed and show, and so that way you can show me what it looks like. I might design. That's a whole different other business, character design. Um, so, but for just a bit of fan art or just another look, uh, original sketch cards, $15. And they're made with my own personalized angry cards. So it's a nice stock, nice weight to it, and a nice coating. And I've knocked out a few cards. I'll link to the Instagram that has a little bit of a gallery of those cards below as well. Okay, other commissions I've got going on. I've got full pastel portrait commissions. Any character, again, um, starting with singular characters are starting at $35 if you want the 11 by 14 size, and 25 if you want the 9 by 12 size. And if you want to add additional characters, then it's a ten dollar upcharge up to three characters because once you get past three characters it starts getting a little bit crowded and when you're dealing with pastel paintings you want to be able to let the color and the strokes express themselves and um you don't want a big money mess again so i will link to that promo um below um the youtube description what else do i have going on again i told you about the shows that are coming up where i'll be selling my comics selling artwork as well as a new series of prints that are um, most likely going to debut at SoulCon this week, as long as my um, page by page is able to print them. Uh, Brian, you know, Brian is awesome from page by page printing. Big up to him. He services a lot of the artists out here in Columbus, and and we're so lucky to have him. So Brian, thank you so much. Okay, um, he's booked until mid August, uh, October, excuse me, October. So I'll put a link to page by page in there, and maybe you could hit him up and work with Brian in the future. Uh, excellent customer service. Okay, and excellent products. I know, um, I believe a lot of us use them. So 
can't encourage you to check out page by page enough. Okay, so we have comics happening. We've got t-shirts happening. We've got various promos happening. The reason why I go heavy promo around this time of the year, starting now at the end of September and beginning of October, is because the holidays are coming up. If you are low on cash and you still want to give something that's original and unique to a friend or family member or for yourself, um, getting a commission from an artist is a really, really, really good way to do that. I can't stress enough how it feels when somebody gives me a piece of original artwork. And that means that they, they, they took some time to think about what, what I like or what I, what, I, what I would be thrilled with. And they, um, you know, it's more endearing. So sometimes, you know, Black Friday is coming up. Everyone's going to go spend money on video game consoles, electronics. I get it. But for those of you that are on a limited budget and you want to have something that's meaningful to somebody, consider commissioning art. You know, that's what we're here for. And um, I know I get a reward out of um, not just your money. I mean, but I mean, it's rewarding to finish a piece and give it to somebody that, that's about to give it to somebody else. So I, I, I get a... I get a buzz out of it, so I dig it. Okay, um, again, I will try to remember to put all those links in, in below in the description. Still, um, you know, this is still not the quite polished YouTube channel programming that you'll see around with everybody else. Um, this is still in its really infancy in its raw form, and I'm just getting comfortable being in front of the camera talking to you. Um, maybe a little bit too comfortable. Look, at, I'm, I'm pretty shaggy, you know, so um, yeah, maybe I'll clean up here, um, you know, for future updates. I doubt it, but, you know, you never know. So what else are we talking about? We went over some tools. I'm here in my basement studio right now. I've got to get this prepared for, you know, the crew coming here this week so we can um, bust out some more artwork and some more interviews. We're going to interview these guys and let them talk to you about their products. Um, we've got a focus coming up on Mitchell Blumenshy's um, Kickstarter that's currently, you know, in motion. Uh, and, and I'm looking forward to showing some images and sharing the links with you on that. So I'll probably, um, uh, let's see, I'll probably try and get that done by next week. I've got to check the dates of the Kickstarter. It might be near and it's in. So I don't want to, I want to make sure I get that video in before the Kickstarter obviously wraps. Last Heaven, Alejandro Rivera's, um, you know, Kickstarter just finished yesterday and it was successful. So thank you to everybody that went out there and pledged, you know, and I hope you did what you see. Regarding Mitchell's um, Kickstarter effort coming up, let's just go ahead and talk about it real quick. All right, Dragon X issue 01. It's an epic dark fantasy action manga-like comic. And that is very close to its goal, but it's going to need your help. Ten days ago, if you like fantasy, um, Final Fantasy mixed with Dungeons and Dragons, mixed with a little bit of um, anime manga flavor, um, I, I can't recommend this highly enough. Uh, it's by my buddy Mitchell Blumenshine. Jeremiah Lambert worked on it. A few other people worked on it. And you really need to check out this Kickstarter. I'll do more of an in-depth video later on regarding the Kickstarter, but I'll make sure I'll put the link in now at the um, at the description of the YouTube video for today. So what else are we talking about? Okay, so let's talk about um, comics. Um, that's in theory what you're here for, right? 100 Day Comic Challenge. I'm right now figuring out how many strips or pages I want to have in the bank before I debut the first cartoon, the first comic. You've seen sketches, you've seen inks, but you haven't seen the comic fully done, lettered, and, and scanned in and finished and formatted. All you've seen is just the raw various process steps. By the time I get to the point where I want to show it, you know, present it in, in the form I want to present it, I would like to have enough updates to where it could come out on a regular consistent schedule and so that way you're not waiting long periods of time in between each installment. So um, let me take a sip here. Sorry. So diary comics, a lot of people update daily, a lot of people have their updates weekly. I prefer to look at my web comics and um, um, my comics in general when they're episodic in nature, I look at them as seasons because I'd like to give it a bulk 
and then I like to move on to something else or I like to give myself a break and do other projects. So with this, with the um, Dadblad Chronicles, I'm thinking about storing up enough cartoon strips that would fill up a book, a printed book, a small printed book, before I even debut the first one on the web. So here's what I'm thinking, simultaneously launching a webcomic with the Dadbot Chronicles on which web platform I do not know yet. So if you have suggestions, throw them in the comments section, um, hit me up with some links, tell me why you like that particular webcomic platform and um, I'll look into it. I, I remain open. So, um, you know, uh, web, um, I haven't done webcomic stuff since Webcomics Nation, you know, rest in peace, Joey Manley. And so, yeah, um, I know the technology has changed. It's advanced. There's a lot of things happening today. So, yeah, go to the comic section, link to the webcomic, link to your own webcomic if you want to. I don't mind you getting some shine off my video. That's okay. And tell me what webcomic platform you like and, and why I should check it out and use it for my own. Okay. So, webcomic debut for the first trip and then update weekly, but... At the same time, I already had a, have a full printed book ready to go for those that want to binge and just like what they see and say, okay, you know what? I'm in. I don't need to see any more. Put it in my hands now. So that's the working theory of what I'm dealing with here. So I'm thinking maybe 26 strips in the can before I debut the first one. And then um, we go from there. Uh, I've got other comics in the works that I'm working on. So having... The ability to just update weekly would free me up to be able to go ahead and work on those other projects so that way maybe the next comic project I have is ready to go by the time the Adbot Chronicles ends and then you know we can keep the train moving and you can keep seeing consistent work for me so yeah comment in the section below um, like and subscribe it helps um, hit the notification bell if you want to be updated whenever I upload a video I don't do them too often in the sense that you won't be spammed by these videos. I try to get to one to two a week. Sometimes it's one a week. So, you know, um, you can make time to watch the video. You know, I mean, do it while you're in the bathroom. I don't care. It's fine. Um, all right. So that's about it. So, yes, I um, we are about to wrap the first month of the 100 Days of Making Comics Challenge. I'm, I started September 1st. It's September 25th. The rest of this week is going to be Soulcon CXE heavy. I will still be working on some comics in the lull between that with my friends coming over. I'll be jamming, getting you know some ideas from them. And um, I will say some of the challenges, if you want to know some of the challenges of it, is obviously keeping, you know, constantly working on the comic and making time. That's the whole point of the challenge is to make time to work on the, on the thing. And if I miss a day here and there, while that might break up the consecutive 100 days, the whole point of me doing this is to build a healthy, consistent habit of being able to work on my stuff and work on comics. So some pitfalls, you know, are there. It's going to happen. And this is all about building better habits in general. So writing the comics, I was focused on that and I was the strips were coming, coming, coming. But now they've kind of plateaued. So now it's like, OK, I've got six to eight strips, maybe ten ready to go let's let's start working on drawing them so that's what the shift's going to be like now and because i'm doing more artwork you'll be able to see those updates i post them on my instagram and facebook the art of jm hunter quite often my instagram is jm underscore indy indy underscore hunter on instagram and twitter is more for my rants and stuff like that so um let, let me show you some of the artwork let's see where we're at okay first strip inked just needs to be lettered in between the strips, I draw other things just because I don't know if the saturation is going to come through. So I figure I might as well work out some other, you know, things. And then we got our second strip here. So that light's probably messing with it. Wow, we're at 23 minutes in this video. This is a long one. I may have lost you like at minute seven. Okay, let's move that light. You can tell when I'm getting tired, things get looser. <laughs> Speaking of loose, this one's really loose. Yeah, it's more like gestures at that point in time. Dad Bod Chronicles, working out the logo. That's not going to stay. I'm going to fix that up and clean that up a little bit. This is just working out ideas, okay? So, yeah, that's strips that have artwork applied to them so far. There's several strips that are that are already written that are ready to go. 
and I'm just, um, you know, trickling them out, getting to them when I can. I think that's a good time to wrap. Remember, CXC SoulCon this week. We'll be talking more about that as well as showing more artwork. And I'm going to post the links to all the various promos and things I have um, on sale right now, as well as a link to Mitchell Blumenshy's um, Kickstarter, the, uh, you know, with the Dragon X Chronicles. All right. Thanks, guys. I probably messed that up. Sorry, Mitchell.